How's everyone doing today? I have a Blu-ray and DVD collection update with seven pickups. And if you've seen any of these, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which one of these is your favorite. Leave me those comments down below. I've got some TV shows. I've got a 4K in here, uh, some horror, a biopic, lots of good stuff, an eclectic mix. First up is The Sadness, which I will be watching tonight. Uh, I'm long overdue on this one. I've heard a lot of people rave about this one. I've heard it's the most violent zombie movie ever. That's what I keep hearing. Those are the blurbs and what people say. But from what I've read, it actually sounds like an infected movie, which are two different genres. I uh, think of the infected as 20 Days Later, the rage virus. Very different than zombie movies. Zombies, the dead are coming back to life. Um, this one, people can be bitten and they could just essentially immediately turn into crazy, uh, you know, violent, disturbed people, which sounds like the case here. Uh, and uh, this is a uh, Chinese language uh, from Taiwan. And uh, again, the clips that I've seen have been super bloody, super crazy, super over the top uh, about this young couple trying to, you know, uh, reunite during uh, the city and the bloody plague going on here. Uh, and it just looks creepy and super violent and uh, I'm excited to check this one out. I got this from a trade for my friend on here, uh, Movie AV Impulse. I uh, shouted him out before. Really nice guy. Definitely check out his channel. He actually has a giveaway going on right now for the Good Burger Steelbook. I think that has a few days left so definitely check out the channel uh, if you're interested in that but also check out his channel for the content. He's a really nice guy, great collection, uh, knowledgeable and uh, I've enjoyed getting to know him on here so far. And that's one of the things I love about uh, this community on here. Like a lot of my friends in real life, they're not into movies. They're more casual moviegoers and they're not into collecting. Uh, so this is a, you know, a community and friendship on here that I really appreciate. I've made a lot of good friends, uh, friends in real life off of here too. Um, so, but this one, again, I'm going to watch this tonight. Finally, long overdue. Heard rave reviews. This is the German 4K Digibook. We don't have a 4K release here in the U.S., which... I don't know. It's the artwork for the Blu-ray here is cool, but I would have liked to have gotten a 4K. And there's the Blu-ray disc back there, and then here is the 4K disc. And 4Ks are region free. I think there's only a couple ever that have been region locked. Uh, but and I did live in Germany as a kid. I lived in Frankfurt, Germany. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? I fortunately didn't retain the language when I moved back to the states. I lived there. Uh, when I was younger and I would live there before the fall of the Berlin Wall, which every time I say that just makes me feel so old, uh, but beautiful country. I remember going on a class trip on the Rhine River. Um, I would like to uh, perhaps visit there again, but The Sadness, a German 4K uh, media book, different than a digi book. It's, uh, I think, slightly taller. I don't like the slightly taller aspect, but uh, I think I'm going to actually integrate my DVDs into the Blu-rays because I don't have that many DVDs left. And it would just be easier to have them all there. And I don't have to look to see, do I have that on DVD? Let me check on here. So maybe I, it won't bother me as much now having a slightly taller one right next to a, uh, the Blu-ray. Uh, next up is The Devil Inside, which I bought this off of Amazon uh, Merchant Seller. Brand new. It even says right there, new. It was sealed. Uh, but clearly it wasn't. It was resealed. You can see the slash right through the barcode, which usually indicates a promo copy or a review copy. It's got a, you know, a sticker thing that was placed on there afterwards and the case uh, was broken. Uh, you can see there too. So I was disappointed about that. I, I don't know if I'm buying something new, I want it new. So I don't know, people say, oh, you don't watch the packaging, you watch the movie. You're paying for a physical media product. If you wanna watch the movie, do streaming. I mean, of course you wanna watch the movie and this is the best quality content, but you'll, for physical media collectors, you also want uh, you know packaging that isn't damaged. So. A little bummed about that. I feel like I've had a lot of uh, purchases recently where I've had issues uh, where a disc is missing or the, the package is destroyed or something like that. But this one right here is actually uh, a really good one that I remember being kind of got a lot of criticism to hate. And I didn't love it initially, but after rewatching, I appreciate it more. It's an exorcism movie. Uh, it's uh, about this woman who's trying to find out what happened with her mother. Her mother apparently committed these murders and... Uh, she was having an exorcism performed, and so she's trying to get to the bottom of that. And there's certain, like, creepy scenes that you remember from uh, this film. And I remember it just being uh, atmospheric and one that I'm looking forward to revisiting. Uh, this is directed by William Brent Bell, who directed um, Stay Alive, which I was really surprised. Still doesn't actually have a Blu-ray release. That needs a Blu-ray release. It has fans. I didn't love it, but I 
you know, I appreciate certain elements of it. I like the cast, but I know it has a big fan following, so I'm still surprised it doesn't have a blue release. He also directed The Boy 1 and 2, which I wasn't a big fan of those movies, but he also directed uh, Orphan First Kill, which I've actually had a screening link for that for about a month now, and I got a sit on i gotta finally sit down and watch that uh, i actually love the first orphan movie and i, I don't I have mixed feelings about you know the same actress playing the same role because obviously she's older now and you can tell it um but i'm looking forward to checking out i gotta in the next couple days i'm gonna watch that one for sure um i'm a slacker on that and uh, i'm thankful for the opportunity to you know be able to get a uh, screening link for review for that one uh but uh yeah william brent bell right here um looking to see what he does in the future oh he also directed the movie where which is a uh werewolf movie that i never hear anybody talk about uh, kind of underrated one uh how is another not related to uh this director but a really good underrated horror movie that i never hear anybody talk about it's a british horror movie that i love uh but devil inside looking forward to uh revisiting this one next up is south park the complete 24th season actually it's not complete because it ha doesn't have the two um, like return to the vid uh, uh, episodes that are, I think, Paramount Plus exclusives. So that's, I guess, the issue there. Uh, this has it, just the two episodes. There's supposed to be four episodes on here, or technically two episodes and two specials. The pandemic, uh, the pandemic special and South Park uh, vaccine special right there. So uh, those two episodes are on here, and it's not really complete because it's supposed to be four episodes. And this is the shortest season episode-wise for South Park. Let me know who your favorite South Park character is and if you have a favorite South Park episode. And let me know what your favorite, um, and I would say uh, exorcism movie, and your favorite infected movie, not zombie movie. Different. Uh, and, yeah, let me know if you've seen this one especially because I've heard just, like, rave reviews for it and really excited. You know, gratuitous violence is what I'm expecting, uh, but I dig it. And uh, more like extreme horror, it sounds like. Kind of like uh, the French extreme horror movies that were like so popular, I guess, like, you know, early, mid-2000s. You think of uh, Martyrs Inside, Frontier, High Tension, uh, movies like that. Mutants is another one that was, like, I never hear anybody talk about that one. That's a French uh, extreme horror movie, uh, which I love that one so freaking much. That's another infected one. But yeah, so a bit of a bummer. It doesn't include uh, the other, you know, post-vid and return-to-vid episodes, like the streaming ones that were, um, you know, exclusive to Paramount Plus. And I guess there's some kind of licensing rights issues for that. Although, you know, this is part of Paramount, uh, this release, this, uh, and it's, you know, Comedy Central is involved here. And I know uh, HBO uh, has like some deal with South Park now too, I think. Uh, so maybe like some of their episodes might be on HBO Max for the these two or something. I, I can't remember. I remember reading something about that, uh, but I feel like a lot of these companies now are reaching out and uh, branching out and reaching out to different, you know, streaming platforms and stuff. And it's creating a bit of a mess licensing wise. So it is disappointing that it doesn't have the other two uh, episodes on here. But still, if you want a physical media copy of these ones, these are the ones, you know, this is the new one. And these are the, what you get right here. I mean, if you want it and you want to complete your, your collection too, because there's been so many other seasons. I mean, this is the 24th season. And I know I have, I don't have all of the South Park um seasons but i have a bunch so i feel like i, I want to keep getting them but i don't know if there's going to be another release with those two in the future or not i hope there will be because i again i want to have them all in physical media um so i remember really enjoying uh the pandemic special but i haven't seen uh the south park vaccination uh vaccination special uh next up is control which is a biopic about ian curtis the lead singer of joy division uh just talking about his relationship drama uh his i guess depression uh he has epilepsy and uh he took his own life at the age of 23 and just i guess talking about the band and uh, you know their rise in popularity uh meteoric rise and uh just everything like that this is a canadian blu-ray release we don't have a release here in the u.s um i think this is out of print and goes for you know uh, i want to say like 30 bucks so it's still you know within uh reach and attainable but i don't see them going up for sale too often uh, and this has uh, Sam Riley in the lead here and uh, black and white. And I've heard a lot of great things like it's a great biopic, great uh, modern black and white film. Um, I like some of their songs. I'm not like I can't say I'm a huge Joy Division fan, uh, but I definitely like a couple of their songs and uh, looking forward to 
uh, checking this biopic out. Let me know what your favorite biopic movie is. Raging Bull for me. I still got to pick up that Criterion 4K release. Next up are the DVDs. Uh, a lot of TV shows especially are only getting DVD releases. And what I hate is when you get a Blu-ray release for a season and then they only do DVD seasons for like the rest. I, that's such a, uh, a gripe that I see like all the time. Oh, Control, by the way, uh, the director here is uh, Anton um, Corbelin, who directed George Clooney in The American. I really enjoyed that one. He did a lot of like music video stuff. Uh, so I felt like this was kind of fitting. But um, I'm pretty sure this was his uh, feature length directorial debut for uh, Control right there. But first up is the HBO Max uh, original miniseries, uh, Aquaman King of Atlantis. This is so much in the vein of Adventure Time. It's essentially the same kind of animation and jokes, but just with the Aquaman characters right here. And this is uh, executive produced by James Wan. Uh, and it doesn't fall into the DCU, uh, you know, realm right there. It's outside of that canon. Um, if you like Adventure Time, then you'll enjoy this. The animation style, you know, it may not be for everybody. Uh, the jokes may not be for everybody. For me, it felt, because uh, it's not really broken up like you would expect, um, you, you can't choose like the episodes. It's just all the way through. There's little breaks uh, for for them, but it just, it the way that it flows, it's very monotonous and uh, inconsistent pacing wise. Uh, I don't know, I, I liked aspects, but at times it just, I don't know, it got bogged down by uh, jokes that fall flat. I do like uh, the voice cast in here. Um, so I, I definitely can uh, appreciate that element of it. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely wanted more from it uh, overall. Um, trying to find out, uh, Jillian Jacobs from Community, she does uh, the voice of uh, uh, Mara in here and I like her a lot. Uh, but I don't know, there's uh, different, you know, tasks he's trying to do to win over, you know, his uh, you know, subjects essentially of Atlantis and the brother, half brother keeps trying to take back the throne. That's like a running gag throughout. Um, and, you know, Ocean Master, all the different characters here, uh, Volko, uh, and, you know, just going on different tasks and adventures to, you know, save the kingdom and, uh, I don't know, the, the back and forth and, uh, I don't know, it, it, it falls flat for me, but I've heard rave reviews about it, so I seem to be in the minority and not really liking it. But again, if you like Adventure Time, I think you'll like this one. It's the first, uh, WB animated series that they've done, uh, like this, so... Um, and again, it was an HBO Max original miniseries. Um, you know, it's bright, it's colorful, it's ridiculous, goofy, stupid jokes and stuff like that. Um, so if you're into that stuff, give it a watch. But uh, I would say temper your expectations on this one. And it's a DVD only release on one disc right there, recycled case. And uh, you do have the, the Dolby audio right there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, it was, it was rough for me. It was rough around the edges. There were some elements of like some jokes here and there, some segments, but overall as a cohesive unit, it just, it falls flat for me. And, uh, it was a battle of attrition to sit through it by the end. It's, uh, if you watch all of them straight through, it's 137 minutes and it felt like double that time for me. I was like, it's just over yet. Um, next up we got billions season six. And this is kind of like a financial, political uh, drama right here. We've got some new characters. Uh, Corey Stahl is kind of like taking over uh, for Axe, uh, played by Damian Lewis and Corey Stahl. I remember him from the TV show The Strain, which is a vampire TV show, which was so freaking underrated. One of my all-time favorite shows that should have been on for much longer. The People complain about the effects. The effects got better as the series went along. And to me, they were right on par with like The Walking Dead as far as effects-wise. I prefer the strain over the walking dead especially uh walking dead uh, is it still on i've never heard anybody talk about it for the past couple of years i feel like it should have ended like six years ago um it just that show got so derivative it was like a shock and all episode then like four or five filler episodes and then another shock and it was like just so the writing just went downhill and the show went downhill um i feel like after they left the prison i know some people say after they left the farmhouse but um, I digress. Billions right here. Let me know if you've seen this one. Great cast in here. Again, um, Damian Lewis, Corey Stahl, Paul Giamatti. Uh, you've got Maggie Stiff. Uh, a bunch of other recognizable people in here. And uh, I like Corey Stahl as an actor. I like Paul Giamatti as an actor. Um, we've got a four-disc set right here. And uh, Showtime 
CBS Paramount release. So it's a Showtime show. And there you go. And I appreciate how it has the episodes on each disc. And if you take the discs out, you've got an episode guide uh, in the liner too, in the interior. So you get some artwork and stuff like that. Um, and I might as well go ahead and show you the whole, so you can see on the other side too, the discs and stuff like that. And you get some scenes and shots of different characters. So let me know if you've seen the show and let me know what your favorite show is that's currently on TV. And I'm always looking for more new good shows out there. But um, they got some special features too. So I appreciate that for a lot of these shows. Uh, you can have some good behind the scenes look. Um, so there we go. Billion season six. And then next up, I was shocked to see what season this was up to. NCIS, uh, the 19th season. Holy moly. I had no idea it's been going for that long. I know it's been on for a while. Uh, but you get some new cast of characters in this season. Uh, I'm really disappointed to hear Mark Harmon is uh, retiring in this season right here. And you get uh, new agents and stuff coming in, joining the team. Uh, former FBI agent, uh, played by Gary Cole. He's taking over. And they have all these different life and death cases. Uh, you've got a bioterror attack. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, some deadly toxins. A mother-in-law is targeted by a killer. Um, somebody's daughter is kidnapped by a cartel. Uh, there's an old love interest and new agents. So a whole bunch of drama and thrilling going on here. Um, and then we got a uh, Fez in here too from that 70s show. Um, so a bunch of new people and some good special features on here looks like too. Over 45 minutes of special features. And this is a five disc set. And this is another uh, you know, CBS release right here and Paramount. And Mark Harmon, I, my favorite thing that he's ever done, Summer School. It's one of my all time favorite shows, movies rather, but uh, he's great in this show too. Um, I haven't seen this new season. Um, I watched this in the beginning and I, again, it was a very great show. The cast was amazing. Uh, great cast chemistry and again i'm a big fan of mark Harmon too but uh to see these new uh, people in here it's gonna be interesting to see you know, kind of like a passing of the guard but there you go you've got the five discs i appreciate that they're not stacked you've got a swing tray right there so if they wanted they could have even put a another disc on the back but again you have the episodes on each disc like that and then you have the interior uh with going over the, the special features and then each episodes on the discs again so episode guide on the interior, which I definitely appreciate. So another uh, long running show right here, NCIS. I, I'm blown away by 19 seasons. <laughs> Let me know uh, if you've seen uh, NCIS and what you think of it and uh, who your favorite character from NCIS is. I feel like it's got a big fandom, but I, again, I just didn't realize it was on that long. So there you go. Uh, those are the seven pickups. Again, uh, I'll pick up DVDs if it's the only format that it's on. Like, there's some movies that still aren't on Blu-ray even. You know, The Abyss, True Lies. I feel like those are the two ones that people are looking for and clamoring for the most. And I know James Cameron is supposedly wants to oversee everything, but he's got the Avatar movie, so scheduling conflict. Who knows when that'll ever happen. I've heard he have been working on 4K transfers, but we we're probably, like, years down the line for that. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different releases that still need blu-ray uh, releases like a ton so there's great movies out there that are on dvd only and i know there's some uh you know blu-ray elitists that won't pick up a movie on dvd to me that's crazy it's all about the movie uh if it's something that i want to see and when i have my collection and it's only on dvd i'll pick it up on dvd and then again a lot of these tv shows are on dvd only but i do hate when they have for uh, tv shows and they do it kind of frequently where I'll have one season on Blu-ray and then the rest will be, or like a couple seasons on Blu-ray and then the rest will be on DVD. Stop that. <laughs> you know, give us all on Blu-ray, preferably. Um, but yeah, Peter Jackson supposedly is, you know, working on, uh, you know, new transfers. I think 4K possibly transfers for his, you know, early horror movies. It's crazy to think that he did all those, you know, Meet the Feebles, Dead Alive, which desperately needs a uh, new uh, transfer. I have the Blu-ray, which is crazy. out of print goes for like a hundred bucks or, or something like that. Uh, and that transfer wasn't great, so I'd love to see a new transfer for that one. But uh, yeah, that is from those movies to, you know, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and all that stuff. So uh, his career shifted dramatically. But I, for me, I, Dead Alive, I'll take that all day. 
Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, the early, I, I heard there was going to be like an aerial video box set for that one. Uh, but I, I'm not sure if that's going to be the case or not, but, uh, you know, let me know what you'd like to see get a uh, Blu-ray release that hasn't had a Blu-ray release yet. But I, again, I would love to see uh, a company like Arrow Video doing a, you know, Early Works Peter Jackson box set. I'm hoping. I, I And I hope there's no, you know, disc replacement issues or anything like that. Quality control issues, which I feel like has been kind of prevalent uh, with so many different companies in the past, like, two years. So uh, we shall see. But there you go. Those are the seven pickups. If you've seen any of them, definitely let me know what you think of them. And let me know which one of these is your favorite. Leave me those comments down below. And I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.